So I'm, 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 I'm so happy to be with you. Now, I don't know whether today is really a sermon. I don't know how to classify it, whether it's a sermon, whether it's a conversation with you guys, or it is whether it is updates on some things because we have been apart from each other for a few months. But I think you will get it as we continue. You will get it, and you will take a, you will get a name for it on your own, whether it's a sermon or not. But I think it is a sermon. But it has three, two basic themes. As as you can see from the title, it's opportunity to serve. However, it has two themes. One of the themes is, is what I'm calling servanthood and outreach. And the other one is children's ministry. And I actually wanted to package that so that it can actually be for first Seventh-day Adventist church in Chesterland. And I think probably many other people may not get the exact sense of that, but you will be able to personalize it yourself. Now, starting with the servanthood and outreach, you know, there are some key facts and some of the truths which have been shared. For example, what is going on today and what has actually been going on, which is usually termed total member involvement that has been going on, uh, particularly in Kenya, I saw the total member involvement has been a key factor, sending people out there. And in fact, the total member involvement comes up with the message that the true measure of our effectiveness is not defined by, by what happens here, but what happens out there. So in other words, the true measure of effectiveness is not necessarily what happens here in Chesterland and in our church, but the true measure of our effectiveness is what happens out there. And so that really says something about the outreach. So what are the outreach activities? So we do acknowledge the fact that, that no one can do everything because the work out there is a lot. And if you think about how much work is out there, you can easily be overwhelmed. 
And when you get so overwhelmed, you say, you know what? No, I'm not equipped. So despite the fact that no one can do everything, but for sure, everyone can do something. And one of the things which actually you have done, which sends that message very clear, and thanks to the WhatsApp, the two days of WhatsApp and the Skypes, and, 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 and actually one of the, one of the Sabbaths, um, you know, it was way after I've left church, and then I get a video clip from here, and the video clip was where Mora did a, a piano. You remember that, Mother? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Teresa? That uh, she did the, uh, the entire service. Huh? And, then, and then I called her. And she says, Daddy, I made some mistakes. I'd already, you know, listened to the video clip. And for me, it was almost perfect, you know? But she was saying, oh, but you know, I made some mistakes. I said, you know what, for the first time, you did the entire service. To me, that is what is more important. And you know, this message, you know, we, we cannot do everything, but we can do something. And of course, there is something about something here. The people who actually encouraged her to actually do it, they did something. I actually want you to commend you for that and thanks for the, those encouragements and they mean a lot to us as a family as well. Okay? And thanks, Mama, for doing those and I wish you continue to do them. Okay? So, there are we can't do everything, but everyone can do something. Now, one of the, the summaries, the nutshell of, of the servanthood and the outreach is captured in the, our second uh, scripture reading, Galatians 6.10. Of course, if you want to get the background, you can go start a little earlier. But if you look at verses 10, verses 10 simply says, and I have it on, on, on screen, that therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, one of the things you can remember is that, that God said, whatever you do for the least of these, you do to who? To me. To me. Okay. So the Galatians 10 captures this. And it says you do good things. You know, not the bad ones. Eh? You do the good things. And you do it to all people. But then it brings up another priority list. And it says particularly or especially those whom you share the beliefs. And I think that's... Uh, uh, you know, that is, uh, th that is one of the big things about, uh, about outreach. And I'll be packaging that uh, later and, and put the first Seventh-day Adventist in the context. But let's talk about the children ministries. In fact, children ministry says quite a bit. One, that is the future of the church. So if we actually want to reach the next generation for Christ, 
we actually have to have an effective ministry which focuses on children and the youth. In fact, more importantly, focusing on the children because the moment they become the youth, time starts to run out. Okay? But when they are young, they are more approachable. They are more reachable. And, and so the servanthood now, we can link it servanthood, which actually focuses on bringing children to Christ, means it is an effective servanthood. Now I want you to turn with me to Mark 10, verses 13 to 16, where Jesus clearly poured his heart out. And So Mark 19, I guess it's not available here, let me use the main. Let's say Mark. No, it's, it's, okay. It's actually Matthew. It's Matthew 19. It's Matthew 19, verses 13 to 15. Are you there? Yeah. Okay. Matthew 19, verses 13 to 15. Then little children were brought to him that he, he might put his hands on them and pray. But the, the, but the disciples rebuked them. 14, but Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and they departed from them. So, the, I, by the way, there are a few things here that the re reaction of the disciples was contrary to what Jesus wanted. And yet they are the ones who were hanging with him who should have understood better than the people who brought the children. Okay? And then the reaction of the Lord was one of being upset. In fact, Mark put, puts it in a more serious way. He, he was upset. He was upset with what actually happened. He rebuked them. And so the point we are getting from the Lord here is we need the children to learn from him. We need to find ways of bringing the children to him. But the, sometimes the attitudes, the actions, the things we say to the children may be those ones which convey this message. You are not welcome here. In fact, um, the way we respond, can it be either to draw them closer or push them even further? Indeed, the disciples were pushing them away. And, the, and Jesus did not appreciate that. And we do this all the time. Now let me tell you a, a true story. The, the, I went to Green Church and you remember we had this project where we were doing the roof for the church. And
And when I got there, one of the elders uh, accompanied me there. Uh, his name is uh, Helder Getui. You will see him when you come for that lunch. <laughs> I, will, I will invite him to that lunch as well. And, uh, and when we went to the, we arrived, uh, the children were being moved from sitting on the seats because visitors need to sit. So they actually had to go and sit at the corner to give space for the, for the grown-ups. Okay. So we do that all the time. So we mean, it means that they are of a higher priority in our, in our church. And that happens all the time. The better seats are going to be reserved for the, the adults and the grown-ups. We package our message in very abstract ways. And we expect the kids to sit and listen and understand and appreciate and come back the following Sabbath. Okay? And, and so the things we do may actually be more welcoming. So we must do everything. We must do everything we can to make our church, our church more welcoming, a more welcoming place for the children. And by the way, when I say our church, it doesn't mean Chesterland only our church in the broad sense. They are the future of the church. So we must do everything to reach the children when they are young and we dare not do anything that hinders a child from coming to Jesus. Anything which, you know, some comments, you know, some things which are like putting them down. And in fact, that gives us a lot of opportunity because little children are teachable. Amen. They are like a blank disk which you can write things you want. It's like a white plain paper where you can draw what you want. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they are teachable. They can learn through observations. And we can talk to them. So by allowing them, giving them an opportunity to hang out with Jesus, they are more likely to learn from him and they are more likely to sustain what they have learned as they grow to become youth and teenagers. And so that brings me to my main message today. So, brothers and sisters at the First SDA Church, I actually have some very encouraging information for you. Amen. And, 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 and a lot of times we do things and you don't quite realize the impact of what you are doing. Now, I was here last time and I think I was able to attend the church in business meeting. And in the church in business meeting, uh, one of my concerns was that we, we haven't actually put, highlighted some of the outreach activities. Mm -hmm. And I'm really hoping that with the, the, you know, even in our website, we started to highlight some of those. Okay. So particularly the project we, you started several years ago we just matured to the point where the, the green SDA church, whom you began, when they were actually holding their Sabbaths under the trees, now they actually have a church where they hold services. Amen. Amen. And then, the time I went there with the Helder Getui, and we noticed the need for the children, and there are not few children. In fact, I have some pictures for them, you will see. Um, you, the, 
the children are many, but they are not quite being catered for. The message is packaged for the grown-ups. Okay. And, and so when I came back, I shared with you know, my colleagues here, and, and we decided, why don't we actually get something you know, for the children to worship in? So that we can actually have a section where the children can have the children's Sabbath. And there is a need for that because unlike the first SDA church in Chesterland where Lenise calls for a children's story and she's lucky if she has three. Sometimes she has one. There, the situation is different. The whole place is filled up. Okay? And it is filled up with the kids of different ages. And so, actually, um, uh, Brother Bill said, why don't we actually start another project so that we can focus on the children ministry? And if you can remember, we initiated our fund, which we said we were going to match, uh, I, I, I match a dollar for every dollar which we give. That was actually done and was concluded. And when the money was transmitted, I actually held a meeting there in that church to kick out that project for the children ministry. So with the help of those funds, and they were transmitted from here, we are raising some more money. So I am going to show you some video clips of when we actually started that, and you can actually see the, some of the reaction of the kids. And in fact, I'm going to ask uh, um, Jerry to pull the, the video clips, but I want to say this. The construction is beginning. Amen. But I have a dream uh, that one of these days there will be an opening ceremony for this facility. And I have a dream that during this opening ceremony somebody from this church will be giving a children's story. Maybe you can nominate one. And I actually believe that with God's help some of you will be represented in this. Okay? And I am hoping that uh, Brother Bill, you can start creating, creating a sign sheet. A sign sheet. A sign sheet so we can know how many people to expect during that period. So, um, um, so let's, let's take a, 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 can we go to the video clip? Now, the, I actually added the video clips. I sent it back to, I, I sent the pictures back to, to Kenya for the, for one of the young people in my office to, to package it in a more, in a better way, but misspelled the name of the church. I sent it back, but by yesterday I had not sent it back. So I said, well, we'll still deal with it, okay? So, Hopefully we'll be able to see that. It's coming.
Anything? I have it on my iPad, <laughs> but uh, okay. So, oh, Bill, can we have a song? I'll just go ahead and pull it through my email. Okay. So let's have a song while I go up and get it through my mind. I believe Woody is going to play some special music and are you going to lead us out in a hymn, Sue? Or? I was thinking battle belongs to the Lord. <laughs> Does that sound appropriate? The battle belongs to the Lord. Let's get it over to him. I'm going to find a page, though. sure what the page is. Huh? Sure. That's a good idea, Mary. Song number one. Praise to the Lord. Why don't we stand for this? We'll sing all three stanzas.
wish they got some pictures. The Lord can do anything, can he? Here we go with Dinko. So, uh, let's see. Jerry. Let's uh, yeah, let's leave that. Go to go to the original disk, okay, and pull the PowerPoint. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Okay, so that gives you uh, a picture. The other one had a video clip where you had some sounds where the kids actually were singing. And so now this is the, the picture where the kids actually decided that they are actually going to contribute towards the project themselves. And the kids were giving, uh, some of them were giving as much as 10 shillings, which is equivalent to 10 cents. And some of them were giving, you know, the, 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 the enthusiasm about the kids as they were doing it was very, so that's one of the pictures you can actually, um, so I had a prayer, and this time the kids are bringing the money rather than the, them getting the money the way you usually do it here. They were bringing the money in front. Um, so which means the money which we transmitted from here was increased, you know, significantly uh, so that the project can begin. So um, my estimation is that, um, and, and by the way, one of the things you can actually see is that this is the church. It's the, the, the main church, that's where they are doing the uh, where we are having that uh, correction. Uh, so my estimation is that in the next uh, few months, we should be able to have three different rooms wow. so that we can be able to cater for three age groups. And that will be the time when we also begin to, 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 to source now because having the facility is one thing, but we also have to have some things like in the curriculum, some of the materials the kids will use and all that. And I will actually fall back on uh, people like uh, you. Lenise is going to play an important role to help us set up some of those things, okay? And, um, and so that's one of the things. The other thing I want to mention uh, as I finish, 
is that, you know, we, we said that we can't do everything, okay? You know, you, a person cannot do everything, but each person can do something. Amen. To me, I think that is powerful. The second thing is, what I see about this project is to be able to create a model at the Green SDA Church such that the surrounding congregations can know that we can actually pay attention to the young people, to the children, so that we can actually package the information for the, for the children. Such that it becomes a place where people will come and see how can we actually package the ministry for children in our churches. Because at the moment, at the moment, what people are doing or what we are doing is doing exactly what Jesus was rebuking. Precisely that's what we are doing. And I think if we can start to you know, have that as a model and send a message, perhaps one or two people might see, and I think I see that as an impact. You know, finally, I need to mention this. For the first SDA judge in Chesterland, I think we have to say the cup is half full, it's not half empty, okay? Now, you may not have actually traveled to do some of these things like I'm doing. Sure. But when that plate was going around, when you were marking the, the tight envelope, saying the Kenyan mission, you actually did that. And I will thank you and encourage you for that. Thank you very much. Okay? I'm sorry that the video was not able to work, but uh, uh, next time we'll put it on YouTube. <laughs> your best to the master. Let's please stand.
Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your kindness, your love, and the protection. And you show this all the time. We thank you for the protection in the travel. Be it those like Imani, whom you have guided to take a tour to understand your work. Be it for the families who have traveled, even for me, Father, to have come back this way to a place which I call home. It's so refreshing to be with our friends here again. Father, we thank you for all this. We thank you for the encouragement you give us to keep pushing, to keep working for you. And Father, we pray that you continue to give us the strength and the wisdom so that your ministry can continue to expand, so that we can continue to reach more and more of your children to the kingdom. And Father, to this afternoon, we thank you for your guided us and you have given us an opportunity to share and perhaps to interrogate some of the things we hope to do, we hope to accomplish. And as we depart, Father, we, we want to ask you that we can depart physically, but we remain together in unity and in spirit. And Father, as we depart now, we ask that you you live with each one of us in our separate ways and keep us until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.